The leadership dynamic comprises the leader, a group of followers, and a situation or context. Leadership requires the leader to influence the group towards a common goal. The key word here, and the subject of this unit, is influence. Other, perhaps less savoury words that are often interchanged with influence are manipulation and power. Whether we view power positively or negatively, one of the distinguishing features of leaders is their dependence on their followers and the impact of the context they are leading in. A leader, therefore, needs to understand and navigate this dependence. Leaders are not only dependent on their followers in the performance of tasks aimed at taking the group towards a common goal, they are also dependent upon anyone or anything that provides an input into their followers' ability to complete the task, as well as the leader's ability to facilitate this on their behalf. These outside inputs can be anything from other more senior leaders helping or hindering, a lack of resources, undue influence of end users, helpful or hindering unions, regulators, the peers, or even the family and friends of followers. In fact, the list of outside factors is almost endless in any given situation. Of course, it would be ideal if the leader had control over all of these factors. However, it's a fact of organisational life that organisations are structured through a division and specialisation of labour. That is to say that organisations create departments and specialised areas for a range of reasons, but usually because it is more efficient to divide work up in this way. The result is that leaders rarely have all of the resources they need to get the task accomplished within the team or group they are leading. In one way or another, they are dependent upon cooperation from other areas inside their organisation, as well as outside. Dealing with these dependencies is therefore a critical part of learning to lead, but it's also one of the most difficult. So why is it difficult? It would be a rare situation indeed if all of the world were perfectly attuned to what you wanted to achieve as a leader and that every resource you required would be made instantly available to you when you needed it. The reality is that people have limited time and capacity, as well as varied values, beliefs and motives for belonging to the group. Also, organisations have finite resources. Additionally, people and organisations rarely have a single focus or a single goal. This means that people and organisations often have competing priorities and goals, and other leaders within the organisation may have a claim to a limited stock of resources that you also need to access. It is entirely likely that these other leaders are working towards what they see as the best interests of their team. Consequently, they may believe that their needs should take priority over yours and those of your team. In this worldview, power plays a critical role in leadership. If we consider the following logic, organisations can be seen as coalitions of different individuals and or groups, whether they be teams, units or divisions. These coalitions and their individual members have enduring differences in values, beliefs, information, interests and perceptions of reality. Many decisions taken within organisations require the allocation of scarce resources and deciding who gets what. Because resources are scarce and people differ in their priorities for their use, conflict over their allocation will result. Goal priority and outcomes of decisions about the allocation of scarce resources emerge from negotiation and competition between stakeholders. The relative power of the stakeholders will play a pivotal role in the outcome of these negotiations. In this sense, power can be viewed as the capacity to influence decisions to go the way you desire. Pfeiffer defined power as the potential ability to influence behaviour, to change the course of events, to overcome resistance and to get people to do things that they would not otherwise do. This logic requires leaders to ask many questions such as, what is the nature of power? When is the use of power ethical? Are there different kinds of influencing tactics? Are these methods more or less effective? How am I oriented towards conflict? And does this advantage or disadvantage me? And finally, I thought leadership was a positive thing. Is there actually a dark side to leadership? These are the questions that we will be answering in this unit.